Hey guys! Oh my gosh, I, it's been a while since I've done um, a video on Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead, but I just feel compelled to do one on Fear the Walking Dead because I think that it has really turned a corner and it was pretty darn good, that premiere. Did you guys see it? Well, let's talk about it. So don't shut me down and stick around. There's a lot of people saying that they don't like Madison, but she's kind of growing on me. Um, you know, it made me think about, like, is it something with our society? Uh, you know, the way our society is, it's making people not like Madison. Or is it her, the, um, her overall character? Uh, her character is very assertive and aggressive, and although typically, you know, maybe the general population is used to seeing that in men, maybe they're feeling a little uncomfortable seeing that in a woman, an assertive, aggressive woman who is kind of bossy and knows her own mind. And so I can't help thinking that, not saying um, that that's how I'm thinking. The reason is that people are having problems with accepting her character and, and identifying with her or liking her. But just thinking that maybe that is a possibility, you know, um, I don't know. I found myself not liking her in season one and I have to ask myself like why don't I like Madison? I'm assertive and I'm pretty aggressive in some situations and I totally speak my mind. You can ask Dan the zombie man about that. So um, am I not liking the characteristics that I see in her that I don't like in myself? Uh, do we expect females to be more um, like Carol on The Walking Dead if they're going to be aggressive. Um, Carol is not so assertive. She is sort of passive aggressive. She does things sneakily and she's aggressive in a way that people seem to be able to accept. You know, she can bake cookies like the best of the women, uh, but she also um, can fight like what we think of a traditional man fighting. And maybe it's Carol's feminine side that allows people to accept her character. Madison doesn't really have that feminine side that we've seen so far. So those are just some of the things that I've been asking myself. If you have a comment about it or a thought about it, then comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. You know, some of it was like uh, predictable when they were in the army camp thing and Troy was doing his experiments. It reminded me of Terminus a lot. Um, so just the, what they were doing. I know it wasn't the exact same thing. And then he saw Nick there. I mean, what's the odds of being picked up by the same group? I don't know. It was kind of um, predictable. You know, you knew that they were going to be the last people in line and that there was going to be some kind of squabble and some kind of fight. But Travis really redeemed himself. You know, he couldn't keep Chris safe like he promised his ex-wife. And so somehow it seemed like he saved his stepson, Nick. Um, but I don't think Nick really appreciated that gesture of saving him. And um, the reunion between Madison and Nick didn't, I don't know, it just seems like, you know, Nick left his family and uh, he didn't really seem to mind too much about leaving his family. Uh, he's, you know, was cherishing the dead and the walkers and valuing them, seeing them as valuable and um, having some kind of right to, to continue breathing and walking on the earth. And I just didn't get a feeling like um, Nick appreciated that. But Travis, anyway, made the gesture. He saved Nick and brought Nick back to Madison. They're reunited. So in some symbolic way, it's almost like uh, he couldn't save his own son, so by saving his stepson, he did his duty, he did his job. You know, he was really badass in that pit, killing all those walkers, and he was becoming a very strong character. And a lot of people like Travis, so it was really surprised when um, they killed him off. He got shot underneath the helicopter, and it went through his gut and out his neck. And in the beginning, you weren't really sure what happened. But then he covered his neck. And then um, later on, we saw that some of his guts were sticking out. I don't know. I thought that was a little weird. But the writer on Talking Dead said that he was kind of motivated or inspired by Apocalypse Now, which is a really good movie. So when they were in the helicopter, you know, similar things happened 
in Apocalypse Now. With Travis being gone, it kind of makes me wonder if Fear the Walking Dead is just going to like die away. I mean, I know some people are going to stay tuned to watch to see what happened, you know, the Travis fans. Um, but then after a while, maybe the, that fan base will die off because Travis is no longer there to watch. And of course, you know, he got some roles in Avatar, so um, that could be a reason why he was written off the show. But everything I've read seemed to suggest that that wasn't the reason, actually, that they had planned to write him off the show anyway. And then that spurred him on to look for other work, which he landed the Avatar position. So he'll be in the next couple of movies, supposedly. But so is Fear the Walking Dead going to die? Uh, with Travis being gone. I mean, some people like Nick, some people like Strand, but not a lot of people like Madison. Ophelia's missing, uh, her dad's missing, and uh, there's a lot, you know, there's not many characters that they have, and so they have to slow down on the killing of the characters, I would think, uh, unless they're going to have, you know, Troy become one of the major characters or his brother. That's possible, too. I mean, we are now at a... Uh, survival camp which is really interesting I'll put the link below on YouTube they actually have one of what is it Otto or uh, Oto whatever they have one of his videos from before the apocalypse when his sons were really little and there's a woman with him where he's trying to sell survivor survival kits so that's kind of cool to look up and to watch I'll put the link below so that you can access that so supposedly that this um, camp was is owned by this man who is a survivalist and I think it's Otto or Ordo, I don't remember. But anyway, so he's been prepping for years before the apocalypse came. But he wasn't prepping for the apocalypse, he was prepping for something else. But the apocalypse happened and it just so happens that that was his business selling survival supplies and being a survivalist so his family's ready. So of course his sons are older now. One son is like a kind of reminds me of like a college student good guy and the other one is uh, got a really dark side. He's the one that was doing those experiments in the Terminus like place. So you know is his brother, uh, is, is Troy is his brother going to be able to keep him under control and his father or is this going to be our future bad guy? I'm not really sure. I I saw some good things in him, you know, after his brother kind of stepped in the picture and that they were leaving uh, that camp. Then he sort of did step in line and he took the initiative to save people and to get people out of that camp. Um, but he has this really dark side to him, you know, writing notes in his little ledger, observing people, conducting experiments behind people's back. His father didn't know he was doing that and neither did his brother. So he might become our next, uh, like, governor for Fear the Walking Dead. A little bit twisted. We'll have to watch and see. If his father dies and he gets control of that camp uh, and his brother can't control him, then we might actually see some pretty twisted stuff go down. But all in all, you know, I feel like Fear is doing better. I feel like they have the opportunity to get more viewers um, to try to get viewership up and uh, I feel like the writers are taking it a little bit more seriously uh, it's even though I don't like the fact that Travis got killed off it did seem to flow a lot better I was held and glued to the TV trying to figure out what was gonna happen next trying to figure out if they were all gonna stay together who else was gonna die what was going on so it did have an attraction which was much better than last year I think people are going to have to buy into Madison. I don't understand why they don't make Strand the lead. I really like Strand. I feel like he's a very interesting character. He doesn't really take himself seriously. He's a little bit manipulating. But he um, gets down to business. You know, he gets things done. And I feel like Madison is more reactionary and Strand is more proactive. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with that. It'd be nice to see them connect again. but. I have a feeling Madison is going to be the lead because it seems like Fear the Walking Dead is total opposite of Walking Dead. So if they have Rick Grimes being the lead on The Walking Dead, it, it makes sense if everything's opposite that they're going to have a female be the lead on Fear the Walking Dead. But I don't know if that's just signing, you know, they're a death warrant for them because 
Madison has to become more likable. I, well, if we go along with the fact that people are having trouble accepting her because she's so aggressive and assertive and she's not nurturing, um, then that character would have to be toned down a bit and maybe her aggressiveness needs to come out in a more passive-aggressive way because, uh, I don't know, the only people I the only characters I really like, I like Travis and Strand, they're my favorites, and then next Nick, and um, that's pretty much it. So Travis is gone, so Nick is okay, I was really disappointed with him when he left his family, so that's kind of like the chins in the armor for me, um, the reason why he dropped down a notch. Uh, so that just leaves Strand. So, but we'll see what's happening. You know, the first two episodes were awesome, way uh, much more improved than last year. And so uh, we'll see what comes this Sunday. Hopefully it's a thumbs up, right? Uh, because I tell you, you got to get your zombie fix. And The Walking Dead takes such a hiatus that there's nothing else to watch um, until Z Nation comes on or Fear the Walking Dead, which I love Z Nation, and I'm really thankful that we have these two shows, Fear the Walking Dead and Z Nation, because it does, it, it does give us our zombie fix. Alright guys, I'll see you later, and thanks for watching. Bye! Where she's not like full-blown balls to the wall. Even the last year was better than the first year, I thought. I waited like days before I watched it last year. It wasn't like high on my agenda. Uh, to to the, the storyline. It seemed to flow a lot better. Um, 